In the glitz and glam of Hollywood, Ali McGraw is a well-recognized name. Her vast talents in journalism, modeling, and acting paved the way for her success. She rose to fame with her incredible performance in the film Love Story. However, behind the scenes, she dealt with incredible challenges. In this video, we will uncover the hurdles McGraw faced and how the rumors impacted her life. Let's have a look at the life and tragic ending of Ali McGraw. Early life. Elizabeth Alice McGraw, a native of Pound Ridge, New York, came into the world in tranquil surroundings on April 1, 1939. She was a child of an artist. Her upbringing was a touching mix of creativity and her father's abusive nature. Francis and Richard McGraw are both artists with personalities and backgrounds that are unlike each other. Elizabeth's mother, Frances, was described as disciplinarian by nature, kind, and critical. She represented the family's axis, putting together their routines and systems. On the contrary, Richard was a guy with a mysterious personality, a sophisticated loner, and a skilled genius. Despite their natural artistic abilities, their marriage was deeply imperfect. Elizabeth, subsequently having the name of Allie, turned out to be the fruit of the weird pairing. Her childhood was both beautiful and miserable. Dad's art in their house displayed many blooms and bird sketches. This is where Ali's love for nature grew. However, the inventive universe was concealing a tougher life. McGraw's father battled alcohol, which almost always resulted in violent outbursts. This created the perfect environment for a cold war between family members. Ali says that she was, in many instances, physically sick with fear. For Ali, home wasn't a safe place. It was a place where chaos and revolution were dominating her at an early age. Due to the problems at home, Ali's studies and imagination became her refuge. She went to Rosemary Hall, a girl-only school in Greenwich, Connecticut, and did pretty well there. Through those years, she had fantasies about beauty and fineness, imagining a life undeniably different from the difficult one she endured as a child. She finished high school at Rosemary Hall and then attended Wellesley College in Massachusetts. There, she explored art history. Her love for art grew, mixed with her interest in creativity and culture. In spite of her classroom approach, her father's drinking caused her a huge emotional setback. The course of Ali's life bifurcated when she was the object of the interests of Eileen Ford, an eminent modeling agent. However, with no confidence in herself, Ali began a career in modeling as a way to distract herself from her troubled home environment. Nevertheless, the magic of the catwalk dissipated very quickly for Ali, and she realized that her true happiness was in another place. In those years, she realized that acting was what she wanted to make her profession. This completely changed her life. She made her film debut in A Lovely Way to Die, which launched her on the road to a shining career in Hollywood. Throughout the years, Ali used art to reflect on her painful experiences and struggles. Her personal encounters with her father's alcoholism inspired her performances. Thus, the acting took deep and real meaning. Though she had so many achievements, Ali's personal life was not a garden of roses. She had to counter her grief and loss in the process of managing her position while it was coveted. Throughout the years, she remained steadfast, pouring out her pain into her work and becoming stronger than she had ever been before. Her odyssey from a tough childhood to a Hollywood star demonstrates that the spirit of tenaciousness and the human being's urge can change everything that seems impossible. Moving to New York City Ali McGraw eventually arrived in New York City after finishing college in the 60s with the expectation that she would pursue journalism in the fashion field. It was a moment when the city was buzzing with possibilities and the unimaginable seemed doable. Her adventure in the bustling metropolis began with a stroke of luck. She started working as an apprentice to the renowned editor in charge of fashion at that time at Harper's Bazaar. Clearly, with her polished air and intelligent mind, the crowds respected and adored her. Just like many others, McGraw was stupefied at Vreeland's appearance, cherishing every word from her like a rich diamond. The dreaded editor had gained the reputation of having a strict personality and high standards, filtering all that is worthy only for the strong ones to survive. McGraw occasionally actively fought Vreeland's stakes with her iron spirit, not giving up even in the face of a ruthless environment. 
In one memorable incident, the time was set for arranging violet snakeskin shoes for a print. Vreeland appeared behind McGraw dramatically throwing her heavy coat on her and walking away. As a symbol of her defiance, she snatched the coat and threw it on Vreeland, all of which left everyone surprised, to say the least. This reveals McGraw's determination as well as her restlessness, for which she received both applause and criticism from her principal coach. Sometimes there was a moment of conflict with Vreeland, but this experience nevertheless affected McGraw greatly and molded her views and objectives in the fashion industry. After that phase, she came out more resolute and more focused than ever to create her own destiny in the profession. The World of Fashion Photography her career was thriving when McGraw dived into the world of fashion photography, working with the renowned photographer Melvin Sikolsky. The photo shoots and studio sessions were very disorienting, but behind all of that, McGraw somehow found peace in her professional career, appreciating the creative process and the possibility of working with some of the most talented people. Among the delights of McGraw staying with Sikolsky, was that she got to spend an afternoon with Coco Chanel in person. For McGraw, meeting one of the fashion industry's most famous people was a strange experience. Grandiosity and dignity notwithstanding, she remained down to earth and treated the event with humility and reverence. When remembering her experiences, the sincerity and self-mockery of McGraw come out, creating a true-to-life portrait of the backstage fashion world. She confessed her insecurities and shortcomings and never shied away from less glamorous aspects of her profession and part of her mediocrity as a model. In fact, the fashion industry, as charming and glamorous as it is, has its dangers and challenges. For instance, when the eccentric artist Salvador Dali was invited to draw her, she was placed in a bizarre and unexpected situation. Naked in his studio, with Dali crawling under the table to lick her toes, McGraw's strength was put to the test. Nevertheless, as usual, she kept her composure, making a quick exit without betraying her amazement and discomfort. McGraw's career advanced with each day providing new difficulties and opportunities. She was consistent from the time she worked at Harper's Bazaar to her exploits in modeling and photography with the desire to succeed in the end. Television ads to Hollywood stardom. The saga of Ali McGrew's journey from TV commercials to Hollywood stardom is a captivating tale of talent, unexpected opportunities, and the perils in the name of fame. It all started with advertising jobs, but it took an unusual turn when she began acting in movies and TV series instead. At the very beginning of her acting career, McGraw appeared in TV ads, advertising for the Polaroid Swinger Camera or the durable bikini-branded Confill. These advertisements gave her the chance to show her natural charm and character. Her major leap happened in the 1969 film Goodbye Columbus, where she captivated the audience with her depiction of a character that was totally different for a novice actress. Produced by the much-talked-about Robert Evans, the film was the beginning of the actress's leap into stardom, with the film also piquing the curiosity of Hollywood's inner circle. Yet, in 1970, she starred in Love Story, which allowed her to rise to celebrity status. In this romantic drama, McGraw acted alongside Ryan O'Neill, and the film had a different popular appeal, attracting fans from all over the world and making McGraw one of the foremost actresses in Hollywood. Her role as Jennifer Cavallari gave her the greatest critical appraisal, the Golden Globe Award for Best Actress in a Motion Picture, Drama. She was also nominated for the Academy Award in the same category. The fantastic Love Story success not only shot McGraw to stardom, but also initiated her into the dazzling environment of Hollywood. However, McGraw had to face a terrible ordeal at the premiere of the Love Story movie in London, where she met Princess Margaret. Humiliated, McGraw was a victim of the princess's acidic words. This showed that even with all that admiration, she too could be vulnerable to criticism and rejection. On October 24, 1969, the day when she exchanged vows with the producer, Robert Evans, McGraw showed the world a page from her new life. Wedding to Robert Evans brought the status of a Hollywood power couple to McGraw, and the two were always mentioned hand-in-hand in, hand in the glittering social life of those days. 
She quickly got familiar with a society that greatly differed from the one she was accustomed to, a world of luxury and wealth amongst movie stars and other elite individuals. Soon they became parents. However, McGraw and her husband Evans experienced their ups and downs, which ultimately led to their divorce in 1972. Despite the hardships she endured, McGraw's legacy lives on as a monument to her talent, fortitude, and steadfast commitment to her profession. From her humble beginnings in television advertisements to her stratospheric climb to prominence in Hollywood, she has made an unforgettable impression on the entertainment industry. Her story inspires budding performers everywhere, reminding them that with talent, effort, and a little luck, everything is possible. Ali McGraw's rise from television advertisements to Hollywood celebrities exemplifies the transforming power of talent and opportunity. She won the hearts of viewers all over the world with her parts in famous films like Goodbye Columbus and Love Story, cementing her place in Hollywood's pantheon of legends, The Scandal of the 70s. This turning point in McGraw's life came during the filming of The Getaway, where she developed an extramarital relationship with her co-star, Steve McQueen. The movie The Getaway became a smashing hit and immortalized her as Hollywood's leading actress. Although while she was experiencing the facade of Hollywood and enjoying its glitter and fame, McGrew's personal life was a disaster. In her memoir, she courageously deals with the intricacies of fame, ambition, and allure, which controlled the major threads of her turbulent life during that period. While talking to herself, she admits to being a walking time bomb of accumulated ambition, ego, insecurities, and romanticism, a highly volatile and vulnerable mix that would take her from an ordinary housewife into one of the most popular television characters. McQueen and McGraw were almost perfect for each other. The gossip soon spread out, with the paparazzi and the public eager about the details of the story. But it came out very soon, as she was tossed about in a storm of rumors and judgment, which divided her loyalties between her husband, Robert Evans, and the magnetic charm of her darling, the two lovebirds. McGraw and McQueen's love affair spread across newspapers and magazines, in 1973, McGraw tied the knot with McQueen. The public generally referred to them as the perfect Hollywood couple, a marriage of two stars. Nevertheless, romantic or not, their relationship wasn't an ideal love story. In her memoir titled Moving Pictures, McGraw gives the readers a true description of some of their marital problems. Both McGraw and McQueen had their own idiosyncrasies and personalities. However, it was the former who was always tense as she tried to deal with the latter's unstable mood swings, temperament issues, and his overshooting to conform her to his preference. On many occasions, he used to call her his old lady, which brought upon her a tight and stifling sensation. She relates the story of how she took up the role of an ordinary housewife satisfactorily, making a compromise. What seemed like a perfect life by the sea in Malibu turned out to be a chaotic storm brewing in the background. Because of his alcoholism and drug use, the marriage of the couple was even more rocky, resulting in further chaos and volatility. The cracks in their marriage materialized as dramatic battles and allegations of cheating occurred. His behavior turned out to be more erratic and self-serving. It drove them apart so that the relationship was on the edge of breakup. McGraw struggled to clasp their unity the rift between them turned out to be eternal. In a moment of honesty, McGraw admitted that the marriage was her own fault. She protested that there was a huge feeling of guilt she carried around, mostly because of her attempts to please him no matter what. While she was trying to win him back, she surrendered her sense of identity. At the same time, their divorce in 1978 signified the conclusion of the love story that had been the center of attention for Hollywood. However, McQueen's battle with his deteriorating health led to his death in 1980. Although there was pain and sorrow, they also shared a few moments of bliss after the five-year break. After taking a break from acting, Ally McGraw went back to Hollywood in 1978 to star in the movie Convoy, which was directed by Chris Christopherson. Thus, it was her comeback film, bringing back to the public a talented young actress who entertained millions worldwide. 
After Convoy, she performed in some well-known films, which Sidney Lumet directed, like Players, in 1979 and Just Tell Me What You Want, in 1980. In 1983, McGraw transitioned to television and showcased her versatility. She was incredibly praised by both critics and viewers for her performance in The Winds of War. Two years later, in 1985, she again made an appearance on the ABC primetime soap opera Dynasty, this time in the role of Lady Ashley Mitchell. She later divulged in a 2011 interview that money motivated her role of Lady Ashley, but her performance does not fade away from the public's memory. Furthermore, she already made history with her part in the iconic Moldavian Massacre cliffhanger episode. Aside from the film and television projects, McGraw also undertook some hosting duties. She had a segment on the Encore Love Stories premium cable channel in the late 90s and early 2000s, thus showcasing her aptitude and moving appeal in front of the screen. Ali McGraw and her co-star Ryan O'Neill from the unforgettable film Love Story were also honored with their own Hollywood Walk of Fame stars. A Separate Piece Ali McGraw's deep and poignant memoir, A Separate Piece, discovers her problems and spiritual search for self, which is presented using celebrity chase, love, and addiction as the background. Even though she was a millionaire, McGraw had that inner void within, and she searched for confirmation and released in extravagance. Tortured by memories of her tragic involvement with Steve McQueen, McGraw was convinced that she approached the brink of the edge. She openly says that she would turn to various temptations all the time, including gifts, drinking, and all the other sorts of extravagances like tequila and chocolate. She enjoyed all those transitory pleasures, which helped her forget her long-lasting emptiness. In 1985, McGraw turned her attention to reinvigorating her theatrical career by portraying Lady Ashley on the long-running TV drama Dynasty. Nonetheless, her journey on the show was eye-opening for her. She was abysmally filled with self-doubt, insecurity, and anxiety. She played Lady Ashley on stage, but it was ruined by her inner voice dominating her mind. Thus, she began to feel inadequate and deceived. However, her character's fate as the victim of the Moldavian massacre in the show brought into focus how short-lived fleeting fame and fortune can be. Through the hindrance in her professional work, she fell in love with a married man, which was the consequence of an inherent indecisiveness. Drown in addiction, she did reach the point of no return and managed to be brave, seeking help. In 1985, McGraw checked herself into the Betty Ford Clinic, and her journey of seeking understanding and healing began. While in recovery, McGraw fought her inner demons identifying and addressing addiction's roots and trying to find herself. She openly gives us samples from her notebooks that provide us not only a look at her issues and achievements, but also a glimpse into her inner world. Although her words are somber and challenging to swallow, they offer a very sad but important understanding of addiction and its impact on the human soul. Leaving rehab, she started her journey to rebuild herself again after the addiction. In 1990, she decided to migrate to Tezucue, New Mexico to continue her creative and philanthropic efforts. Her later career, Ali McGraw is also recognized for her work in theater acting, magazine recognition, and yoga. In 2006, she made her Broadway debut in the play Festin, The Celebration. She exhibited her acting skills by portraying a dysfunctional mom on the stage for which she was adored by the viewers. In 2016, McGraw teamed up with her former co-star Ryan O'Neill for a special performance of the play Love Letters by Gurney. The play toured both the US and the UK, enabling fans to see the old spark between the two favorite stars. Their presence on stage showed a long friendship and a similar past shared between them. During her time as an actress, McGraw has continuously been admired for her everlasting look and talent. People magazine also placed her among the 50 most beautiful people in the world, shedding light on her inborn sophistication and delicacy. Through her personality and talent on and off screen, she has been intrigued and won world recognition. In 2008, GQ magazine acknowledged McGraw by putting her in their sexiest 25 women in film ever. This honor is a testament to the fact that she continues to appeal and she has had a lasting impact on the world of movies. 
McGraw had a charming personality and superb acting skills that made her stand out among her peers as a movie star. In her early 50s, she came to be a devoted Yoga Hatha follower, understanding its spiritual and physical pros. McGraw worked together with the USA's yoga master, Eric Schiffman, on a yoga video entitled Ali McGraw's Yoga Mind and Body. This video became very successful in introducing millions of people to the yoga practice and the positive influence it has on the mind and body. McGraw's yoga film had some impact that helped yoga to be popularized across the country. In June 2007, the legendary fashion magazine Vanity Fair counted McGraw among the main creators of this trend. Besides the stage, magazine accolades, and the practice of yoga, Ali McGrew still holds the audience captive with her amazing talent, grace, and tenacious dedication to her acting career. Her love for animals. Ali McGraw has always been a strong advocate of animal welfare. In 2006, McGraw collaborated on a PETA public service ad. This video encouraged locals to give the topmost importance to their furry friends' protection during wildfires. It asked the locals to leave together with their pets to ensure that they would be safe from being harmed during the fires. Through this program, the necessity to prioritize the needs of animals, like any human being, was spread during disasters and crises. McGraw did not let the break in the filming industry haunt her because she provided the book writer Kathy Scott with the foreword for her book Paw Prince of Katrina in 2008. The book gives an account of the Best Friends Animal Society's rescue operations that were unbelievably heroic in the face of Hurricane Katrina and demonstrates the horrific challenges that all animals experience during natural disasters. Thanks to the community service project in which she volunteered, others were made aware of the dire situation of the animals that had suffered from the disasters and the need to establish an animal assistance and support system. Having been appointed as the U.S. Ambassador for Animals Asia, a nonprofit organization devoted to the protection of animals and safeguarding those who are exploited and beaten in certain areas, McGraw took part in the projects that the organization supports. Her support of Animals Asia's advocacy efforts involves campaigning for initiatives that lead to improved conditions and larger space for animals and educating people about animals' rights and welfare. The animal love connection that McGraw had is obvious in the case of her lifelong admiration for the Scottish Terrier breed. She very much loves these untamed creatures, and that is why, out of care for them, she's so passionate about her uplifting job as an advocate. The retrospective that was held in New Mexico gave McGraw the Humane Education Award in acknowledgement of her efforts to bring about change on all animal welfare fronts. This most informative award of the evening highlights the dedication and the hard work that she puts into educating people about animal issues and striving for their inclusion within society, thereby awarding her as a voice for animals. Alongside Ali McGraw's activism work, she has paved an easy way for other people to battle the fight for animal rights, the lesser known parts of her love life. Ali McGraw's love life is a complex web of ups and downs, it all began in college when she met Robert Robin Martin Hohen, a financier who graduated from Harvard, whom she married. The couple parted ways after hardly over a year and a half of marriage. She dealt with the breakup and it remained one of her secrets. Sadly, his death marked a sad chapter for McGraw. Following her divorce from Hohen, McGraw found herself navigating the complexity of relationships and confronted a highly personal challenge to terminate the pregnancy at a certain stage. During that time, the technique, however inaccessible as it was, made the already bad conditions even more harsh. In her post-McQueen period, she was linked to many men, including Warren Beatty, Rick Danko, Bill Hudson, and others. Her autobiography, Moving Pictures, was an emotionally honest look into her crisis period, showing the challenges behind fame and riches. However, there were good times too. She was still in close contact with her ex-husband, Robert Evans. Evans won his Hollywood Walk of Fame star in 2002. McGraw was beside him depicting how their friendship has spanned over time. The birth of their grandson was a joyful occasion at home that bonded past and present generations. However, McGraw admitted returning to her sense of loss following Evans's passing away in 2019, 
and appreciated his outstanding achievements in the motion picture industry. The fact that their relationship did survive even after the divorce only reaffirms how deep their mutual history was and what high esteem they had for each other. Thank you for watching the video. Stay tuned for more in the future.